Corin et al. 2002 <clears throat> was, in fact, I believe the first study I read. Uh, it looks at uh, taking hair samples from the male uh, rock hyrax uh, and for basically the assessment of cortisol and testosterone. <clears throat> So they assessed, they collected hair samples uh, and they from these males and also observed uh, male dominance disputes, so interactions between males, and were able to, using a method they, they described, uh, establish a hierarchy. So which males were, uh, how males uh, were ranked on, the, on, a, on a hierarchy, basically. Uh, and then they also compared these hormone levels, so cortisol, testosterone, to the level um, or their status on this social hierarchy. Just a bit of background, uh, because this was the first paper I, I took a basic uh, approach when I first started taking notes for this paper. Um, so hormone levels are associated with many behaviours. Uh, so the reproduction, uh, the sexual, the courtship behaviours, feeding, aggression, and parental behaviours. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so blood the collection of blood samples, which we know is the most common, does have ethical concerns, uh, particularly with, uh, it's used widely throughout, but uh, it's particularly an issue with uh, wild animals because it's hard to capture wild animals. Um, and the act, can, the act of catching these animals can sometimes uh, limit the amount of repeat samples you can collect, especially in the wild, in a free range scenario. Uh, and the act of capturing these animals can also uh, change or alter or confound the levels of hormones <clears throat> particularly with the hpa axis uh, so urine and fecal uh, samples uh, can be collected from wild animals however it can be difficult to distinguish which animal uh, they came from um, i have seen in the past uh, i believe it was wombats fed a, a different type of glitter so that you could pinpoint which animal was fed which diet and then you could uh, process your fecal samples that way <clears throat> uh, and we also know from our previous papers that hair is a long-term uh, provides a long-term hormone profile so findings of this particular paper uh, included that in fact rank and testosterone so the amount of testosterone uh, within the hair and uh, the rank of the each male in the hierarchy was strongly correlated it's 0.9 that's very strong uh However, cortisol and rank were not correlated. So these results are actually um, it's, uh, opposite. The opposite result has been found in other species, uh, in, I believe in primate species, where uh, cortisol sometimes is actually highest in dominant species. You could imagine that, hypothetically at least, <clears throat> that if you're the dominant male that you're going to sort of be messed with more and you're going to have to prove your dominance so you're going to be uh, more stressed more often uh, yeah but that that varies species by species animal by animal to some extent the direct relevance to my project for this paper was that testosterone is related to rank in social species uh, that hair provides a long-term means of uh, analyzing or assessing the hpa axis and the application and suitability of each type uh, or each sample type. So uh, this particular paper looked at um, hair, whereas uh, the good thing about hair is it provides a long-term, uh, a longer term compared to urine, blood, feces and saliva at least, a longer term snapshot of the um, HBA axis activity. Uh, of the animals we're looking at. <clears throat>